Patreon subscribers. We'll start the bubbles because they, you know, obviously they'll be quite useful. And we can see how the retail guys are positioning. So they're really low on yen. And so the bubble is small. And so that tells us the performance is poor, which would be fine because they bought the yen. So that's therefore they should get punished. And we've got a large bubble for Kiwi because they shorted the New Zealand dollar. So we should see large bubbles here and we should see small bubbles up there. And that's just, it's just basically proof of the pudding that the sentiment does work. So when they're long and they add, they get punished. When they're short and they add, they get punished. So very cool. Um, but that's just what it is. Uh, Euro is in mixed, dollar is in mixed and CAD's in the mixed. Aussie and the pound are in a strong sell because this is the 50% mark. If we're above 50%, it's a sell. They add, then you know it's a stronger sell. All right, and that was that if it's below 50%, it's a buy. If they add, it's a stronger buy. So Swiss and Kiwi are strong. Yen, pound, Aussie are sentimentally weak. CAD, USD, and Euro are mixed. Okay, and uh, that's how you can use it. It's quite useful, and you can see if they're getting paid or not by looking at the failure rate tab. And so we can see Kiwi, they shorted it, so we've got a good technical. Uh, yen, they've gone long, so we've got a good technical. And, uh, you know, that, that's a stat because you're looking at the bubbles. Look at the strongest bubbles. Strong, weak. Okay, so the perfect score, perfect score. Okay, so that's how you can use your sheet. It's quite cool, quite useful. Uh, so let's have a look at some things. Well, indices are bouncing a little bit, so that's obviously helping... Uh, a weakening on the USD. Also, before I talk about this, is that we have um, we have this uh, currency strength index. So we see the USD is falling slightly. You know, this is the USD at the pink, the red line. So we are falling a little bit, and you can see the pound, which is that green line. We are in ascendancy. The dollar is descending. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Uh, so stop loss cluster above for GU. Uh, 12069, one below is 12020, weekly open, so above the weekly open you target the SLC, it's really close, uh, below the weekly open you have to target the SLC, for a longer term look, look for your ATR longs, and these are based on your weekly values, okay, so if you've got a longer term look, to be honest with you, because the CPI should come in hot, it's going to boost USD, so I think a lot of these things today, possibly going to be reversed and uh, it's likely that things are going to want to get stops before the move so I think that's possibly likely and then you know we'll, we'll come and get that one then we'll come and get that one which would be really um, typical and cruel so that's GU uh, AU probably the same thing to be honest with you uh, because uh, you know GU is a sell we're above 50% and AU is a sell we're above 50% so possibly uh, up there, 69.59. Uh, one below is at uh, 68.79. Weekly open, target that. Longer term look, HR target long, HR target short. So I reckon up there, I think we want to get those stops out before the CPI. Uh, but we don't really know exactly what it's going to say. The, the rumor is that it's going to come in hotter than expected because of the NFP and other factors. But we don't know with 100% certainty what the result's going to be of the data. <laughs> right? So it's possible it's not going to be as bad as feared and then things are going to rally because we'll be risk on and then this can pump and it will take up all those stops. So just be careful. The thing is you need to know your exit. That's the key. If you haven't got, if you don't know where your exit is or you don't have a stop loss, you're going to encounter quite a big drawdown on your move Unless you capture it, unless you're very strict about getting out, uh, you might not have the discipline to exit at a loss. It depends how long you've been trading. So be careful. <laughs> we could come up there and then we could come down, which I think is a possible, what's the possibility? That's a strong possibility. However, if the data isn't as bad as feared, up and grab all those stops above and they really stop at 71.15. So that's a massive move ahead where it might just want to clear those stops out and then fall you can see why you know we've got people entered here there's, there's those stops there 
So uh, very tricky. I've, it's possibly up than down, but they will depend on the data. Uh, EU. And um, so we are 60%. So we are, you know, a, a big picture, a static level sell. They are selling it slightly. Uh, the one below is at 106.48. One above is at 108 on the dot. And so weekly open, target the SLC. Below the weekly open, target the SLC. That's quite close. That's possibly likely. It's 20, 23 pips away. And it's large off the two. Um, if they sell it, then we'll come up. So it will depend on the sentiment. Maybe you can check the sentiment in real time on your sheet as well. This is a good thing as well. You know, you can use the currency strength index. There's your link, which I put into Discord loads of times. Uh, and then, you, you know, you want to check your um, spreadsheet tickers. So you want to check the uh, whether or not that decreases or increases. This is slightly unusual because we're not, we haven't opened for New York, but we, we can ignore that for now. That will uh, fix itself at two, two o'clock in the afternoon. It should really be not saying NA, but we can ignore that. And so, um, yeah. So keep an eye on your spreadsheet for changes and you could probably argue we've got some technical resistance. We're making a channel and you see, uh, tricky, very tricky. Uh, looks fairly bearish because we've got below weekly open. It's 79, we're at 77. <laughs> so we're two pips below the weekly open. So probably get the stop loss cluster. So yeah, it's probably, possibly what's going to happen. And uh, dollar CAD, this is uh, all choppy. Let's have a look. Dollar CAD, wow, big moves, crazy. Um, <laughs> one, three, three, twenty nine. Remember, we are a sell. Um, you know, they went long. They went long up here, which is a bit bonkers. And they came down to punish them. And the one above is too far away, so I won't show you that. Uh, one, three, three, twenty nine. Weekly open. Below that, we'll target the SLC. Okay, so there's your entry. There's your target. I'd per, I'd probably avoid this personally. Uh, this looks horrible to trade. It's like we're making a megaphone pattern almost, you know, a broadening of those swings. So um, very tricky. It's, you can't make a channel out of that, can you? Maybe you can. Yeah, be careful with that one. It's pretty horrible. And um, we had the Swiss inflation come in hot. So uh, that should probably make the Swiss seat appreciate and we can see how on uh, a spreadsheet we can come back to the failure rate tab and they've shorted the Swiss seat. so the price should be better the sh we should see a stronger technical because they shorted it they need to get punished and so um, this should be coming down okay so the one above 93 one below it's at 9050 so because of the sentiment, we can probably breach weekly open to test monthly pivot. Below the monthly pivot, HR short, the stop loss cluster is probably going to be safe because it's so far beyond the ATR weekly target. So um, look for a short below WO, look for a short below MP, target ATR. And then lastly, Dolly, and then we'll have to do gold as well because it gets requested. We have to look at gold. Uh, there's the pump, uh, one above, um, 133 and 129.75. Uh, Marco was saying to buy this and it was a good trade. I entered with a 0 0.02 lot because <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure about the whole thing, but uh, it netted me a little bit of profit, which is quite nice. I'm um, just using very, very small sizes right now because tomorrow's uncertainty is quite great. And I can't be trading like normal sizes because no one really knows what's going to happen. And with the small sizes, you can be quite flexible about where your stop is as well. So you can afford like, you know, a large stop loss with a tiny, tiny micro lot. So, you know, you can probably withstand some of the moves and then make some profits. But if you've got a large size, a 45 pip move, you can see how it's just a retracement that could have got you out. So if you've got a large size for good risk management, that could have done a lot of damage. But if you've got a tiny size, you can withstand that, that retracement. We're above the monthly pivot, and we're now a buy. So that's your bias, okay? So things have to retrace. That's the thing you've got to remember. They can't go in straight lines. It has to zigzag. 
and this was admittedly quite naughty, but you can see how things just, they can't go in straight lines. They have to retrace first and then bounce. Uh, gold, gold, gold. Uh, so let's have a look at the stop loss cluster. Now do note these resistance boxes, okay? Um, buyers are now in control. We dropped a lot. This is uh, crazy. One above is at 1872, and the one below is 1852. I'll wrap up now because I don't want to make it too long video. Remember to check your spreadsheet and check the better volumes if you can. It's a really good indicator. And basically what we're doing, we're mapping those white candles because they're the sell candles. Reds are buy, but you can see how the whites are dominant, and that tells us selling pressure on this market. So that, technically speaking, you know, is putting a little bit of pressure on gold, and we are a sell at the big picture. So I think probably SLC below is likely. 1852, keep an eye on that.